Well, okay. Hello, my name is Vince Lowry. I'm the Director of Student Success and Engagement here at UW-Green Bay. I'm also the Director of the Gateways to Phoenix Success Program. So as we wind down GB Welcome, I think it's appropriate that we devote a session to the university's online learning environment. Classes will start tomorrow. Uh, maybe you've already gotten some emails from your professors. Uh, maybe they've already launched this thing called Canvas. Uh, you've got a course that's that's live in Canvas. Maybe you're still trying to figure out what that is. Well, we have the session for you. And so this session is designed to get you uh, begin to get you acclimated to the learning environment to see what it looks like to figure out how to navigate it and to get some tips on how to utilize it. So we have with us uh, Todd Dresser and uh, Nicola Gro, uh, members of our Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning team. And so uh, Todd's going to be in the driver's seat. He's going to walk you through uh, what the site looks like. Um, he's going to share his screen so you can actually see what it looks like. And Nicole is going to be watching for your questions. So as you post questions uh, in the chat, the little uh, dialogue bubble there with the question mark, um, you can post questions there. I'll clear them through and um, you'll be able to uh, get info from Nicole. So with that, I'm going to move Todd over to the stage and I will exit left. <laughs> Hi, Vince. Uh, thanks for uh, for having me here, uh, and thanks to all of you all for for being here um, and for you know continuing the orientation uh, your first year um, at UW Green Bay. Uh, and so, as Vince said, uh, Nicole and I are here to talk about Canvas. Um, but if you have questions about any of the other technologies too that your instructors may have communicated that, that they're going to be using uh, for you to do your homework with, uh, such as VoiceThread, Blackboard Collaborate. Um, all these terms that maybe never heard of until just this week. Um, we can answer those questions as well. Uh, so, um, as been said, I'll uh, share my screen um, and then I can start to show you around um, Blackboard, or sorry, um, Canvas. Uh, so, uh, Canvas is um, What's called a learning management system, which is kind of a gross term when you think about it. <laughs> it should be something more exciting than that. Oops, went to the library by mistake. Um, you can find Canvas. Um, I'm already logged in, uh, but if you haven't logged in yet um, and you want to know where it is and how to find it, um, it's here. On, I'm on the Green Bay UW Green Bay homepage. Uh, you click on Canvas. Um, and then it should take you to the login page. Um, you'll notice on the login page that there's a, a bunch of resources here to help with. So not only is there the login, uh, but there's also the support number if you run into uh, problems with Canvas. Um, you can also chat with a support representative uh, or view the guides. Um, and I'll come back to these in a little bit to kind of show you uh, a little bit more about them once you sort of know more what Canvas is. But once you log in, um, it's going to look like this, um, and this is called your dashboard um, up here at the upper right, uh, upper left hand corner is called dashboard. Um, and what that is, it's a way for you to see all of your courses in one place I and mean, all the information that's there. Um, so to kind of orient you to what's going on on the dashboard, I'm actually going to start on the right side and work my way from right to left. Um, you'll notice that on the right side, there's your to-do list. Uh, and then to-do list is kind of, is, um, really handy for sort of going directly to those things that you need to do for your classes. So hopefully your instructors are going to be putting like due dates on their assignments that they're going to have, quizzes, um, uh, essays that they want you to write, discussions they want you to engage in, and that sort of thing. Uh, you'll see those sorts of things here. Uh, and you can just click on those, go straight to those in your courses, and that's um, a handy thing. You can also see the coming up. Um, so those are things that maybe aren't to do right now, but they're things that are going to be coming up in the next couple days. Uh, and then if your instructor gate, um, has given you feedback on an assignment, you can see your grades and view that feedback. So that's it's really handy to have uh, to 
check on the dashboard and sort of see what's going on there. Um, in the middle of your dashboard, you, you see these are called course cards and these are um, these are all your courses. Uh, these are the courses that I have here. Um, and to kind of give, orient you to what's going on on them, um, if you look on the course card, you can see that there's a little dialog box here. That's if you had discussions to respond to um, the little uh, piece of paper with the pencil on it. That's if you had an assignment to submit. Uh, and then the bullhorn is um, announcements. So if the instructor, your instructor has an announcement for the class, you'll be able to see that that's here. And you could click on that and go straight to the announcements for the course. Um, you can also, if you want, um, change the name of your course. You can see here that I have a name here, Tuesday 8 a.m. that maybe doesn't make any sense. So I want to give it a name that's maybe more meaningful to me. Um, and I can apply that and then I'll be able to um, maybe have a more meaningful name. I can also rearrange the items on my dashboard. And so if I want to see my courses, for example, not in alphabetical order, but in, <clears throat> excuse me, the order in which I'm going to have them throughout the week, I could do that as well. Um, so if I had this class before this class, uh, I would be able to see that um, maybe more easily in the dashboard. So that, that can also be a handy thing to do to kind of arrange your dashboard to customize it for yourself. Um, and if you frankly would just rather not see like the little pictures, but you just want a list of all your courses, um, you could do that as well. Um, and this would gives you a, a view um, based on the things that are to do in your classes. So rather than sort of seeing the courses, you could sort of see them as a, a list of things in the order of um, items that you would have due. And that can also be a handy way to arrange your dashboard. So lots of things you can do there. Um, moving, continuing our, our migration leftward, um, you can see that there's the uh, a navigation bar here. And this navigation bar is always visible. So even if you go into a course, you'll be able to see the items that are on here. Um, the first thing you'll notice is the help button. The help button is great um, for getting help, <laughs> obviously, as you might think. Uh, there's lots of different ways to get help, kind of depending on your preferred style, I think, for getting help. Um, it, for example, if you're the type of person that um, likes to read the directions when you get a new thing, so if you, you, know, you buy a new piece of electronics and you like to read the directions on how to use it first, I would say the Canvas guides are for you. Um, clicking on that, you can see uh, the student guide. Um, and uh, say you had a question with quizzes, you could go to you know, how do I submit a quiz? How do I take a quiz? Uh, how do I see a rubric for a quiz? All those sorts of things. Um, and so that, that's, that's a handy thing uh, I think to have. You can also, I suppose if you wanted, see the, the instructor guide. And so sometimes your instructors, if they have issues, um, you can actually <laughs> maybe send them the link to, to the uh, item that might help them um, fix their issues in their course. Um, moving downward, uh, there is chat with a Canvas support. And if you click on that, it opens up um, a chat window. And then if you're having an issue with one of your classes, um, someone from Canvas will be able to uh, help you uh, answer those questions. And that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and then finally, well, two more things. One is email. You can email Canvas support uh, or you can call them on the phone. Uh, and those are all handy ways too as well. So just kind of depending on what your preferred style is, I would say probably 75% of the people, um, surprisingly enough, use the chat feature as their preferred method of getting help. But uh, whatever is useful for you, uh, you can do that. Uh, inbox is email. And so this is a way for you to email your uh, classmates or email your instructors through Canvas. Um, calendar. I'm going to click on it and see. This, things are taking a little bit longer to load because uh, we run Microsoft Teams as well as Canvas. It can take a while. Um, so 
the calendar shows you all of your classes at once. And so you can see on the left here, these are all the different calendars that I have. Uh, I can click on there and things will start populating based on due dates um, into the calendar. So it can be a really great way to sort of see everything at once, um, think all your due dates and that sort of thing in one place. You can also create events for yourself or create tasks for yourself. Um, so you can see here, you know, if I was a student worker and I wanted to um, add my student uh, work there to sort of see how it overlapped with my assignments in my class, I could do that uh, as well in the in the Canvas calendar. Um, it's like it can be a useful way, like I said, to um, I'm going to delete this event right now so I don't forget to do that. Um, but it can, this can be a useful way to sort of keep track of all the things that you have going on um, in all your classes. Courses is a way for you to jump to all your courses. Dashboard takes you back to the home where we just were. And then if you click on account, there are a few things under here that can be useful for you to know. Um, the first is your settings. Uh, so this, you know, these are your personal settings. Um, a few things I'll highlight uh, here for you. If um, you prefer to have what's called the high contrast user interface, so this can be, um, you know, if you um, uh, have um, low vision, you can use the high contrast user interface, and that will uh, make make the things you're supposed to see pop out a little bit better. Um, you can under, uh, have it underline all links. Sometimes links can be hard to see. Um, so there are a few uh, different options there for, um, in terms of accessibility that you might uh, be interested in. Um, if you edit the page, if, um, if English is not your first language, you can also have Canvas um, and a couple other languages as well, Spanish, French, um, lots of different languages. This will translate the things that are in Canvas for you. It won't translate um, like Word documents and that kind of thing, but it will translate the things that are in Canvas and that can be useful as well. Uh, finally, you can also add other contact methods. So if you have another email address, for example, that you'd like for Canvas to email things to you, on, you could do that as well. Um, so I recommend you checking that out. Uh, also, in the notifications area, Canvas will, uh, you're going to start to notice as you get assignments coming due, that Canvas is going to start sending you notifications of things that happen in your class. When you have uh, due dates that are coming up, um, announcements from your instructors, uh, your instructors grade things. We have discussion posts that you're supposed to res respond to. Um, Canvas has a lot of different ways of, or lots of things that will happen. You'll get a notification about. Um, and if you either like that or you don't like that, depending on your personal preferences, this is where you tell Canvas to either uh, start notifying you more because you want to get more notifications about things or start notifying you less because you're sick of all the notifications that it's giving you. Um, and this, um, legend up here sort of tells you what the different um, notification schedules are. Um, so if I wanted to say get notified right away of a change in due date, then I would click that and then Canvas would notify me right away of a change in due dates um, in a class. And I, like, you can see where that might be a useful thing um, to have. Uh, typically what I recommend for people is to sort of leave things as the default settings, how they are. Um, but if you start noticing that you're annoyed in one way or the other, either you want more notifications or fewer notifications, um, then come into this area and you can change that for yourself. So I'm gonna go back to the dashboard because I just dumped a lot of information on you all. Um, and so if you have any questions, um, this might be a good time 
before we go into a, an actual class um, to ask them about Canvas or any of the things you've seen so far. Like, how can you use Canvas as a um, a tool for organizing your coursework? Okay, well, as you as you think of questions, I'm going to go, go into a course now, and there's two ways that you can navigate to a course. One is to go to the courses here, and you'll get a, an alphabetical listing of uh, all your current courses. Or the second way is to go um, click on the course card. And in this case, I am going to go into my sociology class here. OK, so this is um, a sociology class um, that's set up in a way that might be similar to one that you could conceivably take. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is that it, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so similar to maybe Google Classrooms that you might be familiar with, Canvas also has um, ways for you to interact with your instructor, has ways for, you, ways for you to submit your homework, has ways for you to uh, collaborate with your fellow students, um, and it has ways for you to uh, read learning materials, uh, listen to uh, lectures or watch lectures that your instructors might uh, have for you and that sort of thing. The first thing I'll, I'll show to you is that all your, all, all your courses will have their own notifications. Um, so what I showed you earlier was called your global navigate, your global notifications. Those are, you know, your default settings for how you want all your courses to notify you. But you may notice as you're going that um, there are some courses that you want to pay particular attention to, or there are some courses where um, you just want, or, or there's just too much going on. Like I can't handle all these discussions, <laughs> for example. Um, and you can tell Canvas to stop, uh, either to start notifying you or stop notifying you um, when um, a discussion is posted. Uh, so in this case, uh, I'm gonna say, well, I, I don't want <laughs> notifications for discussions, so I'm gonna turn that off. Um, so you can do your notifications both on a course by course basis or for all your courses at once. All right. Now I'm going to go into the student view. So this will look hopefully. Um, ugh. Try one more time here to go into the student view. Come on, Canvas. <laughs> OK. So um, in this course, you'll see that, you know, there's lots of um, things. Uh, one thing I'll notice is that uh, you'll see that there's just a lot of stuff on this home page, right? Um, Canvas will put all of all the materials that your instructor wants you to see will sort of be visible all at once. Um, and in general, I think that's a good thing. Uh, but the first day is going to might feel a little overwhelming. And so what I like to do, frankly, what I like to do as I go along every week is just have open the things that I need to see um, so that you're not um, having to filter past things you don't need to see. Uh, so in this case, since you know it's the first week, all I want to see is the getting started uh, module that has the syllabus um, as well as you know the materials that I need to do for the first week of class. Um, so to, to navigate through the material, you can do it in a couple ways. One is you can just start clicking on your uh, the items that you want the instructor to read. In this case, you know we're learning about the course, uh, and I'm going to start flipping through it. You know I learn about my instructor. Um, here they're going to tell me how to be successful in the course, all the things that I need to do, the types of assignments that I'm going to have. 
uh, how to contact them and that sort of thing. Those are all good things to have. Um, here they're going to tell me about the course materials that I need to purchase or don't in this case don't need to purchase. Um, but as you can see, I'm starting to I'm going through this and you know maybe you know it's, it's very linear. I just kind of want to get a more of a global view. Um, I can click on home, go back to the home page. Um, I want now I want to start doing my work for the class. So I'm going to go to in this case, go to the discussion. Um, and this is a very typical thing that your instructors may have you do uh, is to do a discussion which you introduce yourself. You'll probably introduce yourself uh, lots of times <laughs> over the course of the first week of class, um, which is good. Your instructors genuinely want to get to know you and are interested to find out more about you. Um, so in this case, I'll reply to the discussion. Two D's in my name, um, you know, and I would type in whatever the instructor you know, wanted me to put in there. A few things to note here is that you can see that when I open this up to start typing, that there's a lot of um, options here for things I can add. You know, some of these are very similar. You're, you know, you're probably used to bold and italics and underline. Um, these are very similar word processing functions. But then there's things that are maybe particular to Canvas. Um, one is that maybe your instructor will want you to record a quick video. Uh, if you do that, to, you can click on the little, what looks like a YouTube, uh, frankly, icon to me. Um, and that will open up this interface where you can start to record um, yourself talking. Uh, in this case, uh, my webcam is being used for the meeting that we're currently in, so it won't um, be able to double dip it uh, for that. But um, you could record a quick video for yourself. You can uh, attach an Office 365 document. So that's like Google Docs, if you're familiar from that from high school. Um, or maybe you can upload a, a picture, um, embed media. So there's lots of different things you can do. Um, so I would encourage you to play around with uh, this interface a little bit just to kind of see what the options are. Um, so then if I post a reply, then my reply is there. Um, you'll notice then when you start, as you start going, um, th this is going to get to be a long list of people who have who are introducing themselves. And you maybe you want to filter out uh, the people that you haven't read already. So you can click the unread uh, and then just see the posts that you haven't read yet. Um, and you may be asking yourself, how does Canvas know if I've read something or not? Um, and the, the answer is that it kind of doesn't. What it does, though, is it notice it knows if you scrolled past something on your screen. So if you scrolled past um, or scrolled to, I should say, a, a post, it counts that as read. Um, but that can be a useful thing. Uh, like I said, you'll notice that there's going to be you start to get a lot of discu discussion posts. Another thing you can do is you can filter by author. So in this case, if I want to filter by test student. <laughs> Um, actually, I didn't get any. That's interesting. Um, but you could filter by the author of the post as well. So sometimes your instructors may ask you to um, respond to a particular person. Uh, and you can do that there. OK, now I'm going to go back home. I'm going to see what, what other homework I have to do um, in this class. Um, maybe now I have a, a PowerPoint that I'm supposed to read. And this is a very typical thing uh, that you'll likely have to do for your classes. Uh, you'll notice that the PowerPoint opens up in uh, its own document reader within Canvas. And here it is. So I'll, I'll read you know, this PowerPoint about the introduction to sociology um, here. You may also decide that you don't, uh, you prefer to download it and if you want to do that, you can click on the download the PowerPoint and it'll download onto your machine. Uh, one thing that happens a lot of times is that instructors will, um, especially these days, will do audio narration to their PowerPoints. And um, when they upload them, in order to hear the audio, if they said, hey, there's audio for that PowerPoint, um, you have to download it onto your machine and then play it on your computer. Um, so that's just a tip uh, that happens sometimes. Uh, next thing uh, is taking a quiz. 
So a quiz can be something you may want. Um, if it's a multiple choice quiz like this one, uh, you may um, be able to take it on your phone. Um, if it's a if your quiz that you're taking is a uh, an essay test or something like that, I would recommend um, taking it on a computer. Uh, you'll notice when you are in the quiz that you know the instructions are here. Uh, there's a timer that's going over here. Uh, once you start answering questions, you'll notice that there's a, a check mark that appears in the upper right hand corner. Um, so Canvas is sort of marking that you have um, answered those questions. If you want to bookmark a question to come back to it later, let's say you know I'm not really sure about my answer for this one. You could flag it there, so that way you know that you can um, to come back to that question uh, at a later time, because uh, you want to make sure you check it before you submit it. Uh, one thing to note um, that these check marks are, and you'll notice that there's a little flag here as well. Um, your instructors are able to uh, know which questions you've answered, how long you've been in the quiz, and that sort of thing. Um, which is actually kind of nice. So let's say I'm taking this quiz and my internet goes down or the battery runs out on my computer or something like that, and I get kicked out of the quiz and it's not my fault. Um, you can email your instructor and say, hey, this happened to me. Um, and your instructor can then look at what's called the quiz log, L-O-G, and they can see, oh yeah, th um, this person was taking the quiz and all of a sudden uh, they weren't there anymore. And so that they can give you another attempt on the quiz. So that can be a useful thing um, to know uh, as well. So uh, in terms of being able to advocate for yourself for quizzes. So now uh, let's say I'm done with the quiz. And I want to submit it. Click Submit. Let's say I have eight unanswered questions. That's fine. And now it's going to submit. Uh, and then it'll give me my score. Um, and then sort of depending on how the, your instructor sets it up will depend on what this view looks like. But uh, in this case, the instructor set it up to give me the answers um, after I submit the quiz. OK, so I'm going to go back home. Um, the final thing I think I'll, uh, to show you, well, maybe two more things. One is uh, a lot of times you'll, um, your instructor may have you read um, information on a website. Uh, so in this case, the textbook is actually on a website. Um, when you open it up, the website will open in Canvas, but you notice that this window is kind of small. I think it's kind of small anyways. Um, and if that's fine with you, that's great. Um, if, however, you prefer to open it up in a bigger window, uh, you can click the link and um, it'll open up in a, a bigger view. And it's, I think it's just a little bit easier to, to read um, in this bigger window. Oops. <laughs> there we go. Um, Uh, and then the final thing I'll show you is submitting an assignment. Where do I have my assignment? Here we go. Um, so and you'll know an assignment uh, again is this little paper and pencil icon. Quizzes have the little rocket ship. Uh, files to read, have a, a paper clip, uh, and internet links have a link. So um, in this case, I'm going to submit an assignment. And uh, in this assignment, here are the instructions. But now I, I just want to submit my work. Click Submit. Um, and then I have a couple of different ways to do it. I can upload a file, uh, which is very much like uh, attaching a document to um, an email. You can type your uh, answer directly into here. Uh, or maybe you will um, link a document from Office 365. And again, that's very similar to if you've used Google Classrooms, oftentimes you will submit um, assignments from your Google, your Google Drive to 
your instructor. Uh, it's kind of the same idea. But in this case, I'm just going to type it in and submit. I got get a little celebration there that I submitted. Uh, I should be. There we go. Um, you'll notice that if I want to resubmit, uh, let's say I forgot an important part of the assignment uh, or I put the wrong file in there or something like that, I can um, resubmit the assignment. And then in that case, I'm going to let the instructor know this is my real submission. Uh, Todd, in a similar vein, um, we have a student asking if you can save a draft and come back to it later in Canvas. Um, kind of. Um, I mean, you could, you could submit your draft. The only thing is you can't necessarily get it back. So what I would recommend is saving it uh, on your computer um, or saving it in uh, Office 365 or something like that, um, and then submitting it once you're ready. Um, like I said, you can submit an assignment more than once, um, but I would recommend probably saving it somewhere else and then submitting it once you're you're ready. Uh, the exception to that is if uh, you're doing a group project, um, you can save, each group will have its own files area. You can sort of save your work there. Um, but in general, I would say, it's probably better to save it on your computer. Thank you. Yeah. I know what do you think, Nicole? What would you recommend? Um, I would recommend the same thing. Uh, you can copy and save it into your, I mean, everybody has an Office 365 account, so you could just copy the question from the Canvas assignment um, and if it's like a text box or a discussion board and you can save it um, into your uh, a document in your Office 365 and work on it there and then upload it or copy and paste it, actually copy and paste it into your discussion board. It is uh, a lot easier when you're working on a discussion board to actually use the text box rather than um, uh, upload an assignment to it. If someone would have to click on the attachment to open it within the discussion board to see it. Um, but most faculty tend to prefer that you use the text box for the discussion board and you upload an assignment, uh, upload a document to an assignment. But either way, you can copy the prompt or the guidelines, put them in a Word document, work on it in a Word document, and always copy what you want to submit, highlight, copy, and paste right into the text box. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And that can be a really useful thing to do too if you're taking a quiz. Um, you know, sometimes if you're doing an essay quiz, it's better, I think, to type your answer in a Word document and then copy and paste it into the quiz uh, rather than typing it straight into the quiz. Um, just because you never know, you know, if someone comes by and kicks your power cord out by accident, <laughs> you, lose, you lose power, then you lose your um, all your stuff in your quiz. So um, it can be uh, useful to, um, yeah type the things in a Word document and copy and paste it. I think it's a, a good general strategy for sure. Um, one thing actually I forgot to show is the grades. Because um, one of the cool things about Canvas is that you can um, actually do what are called what if grades. And so um, you can sort of see it's called the what if scores here. So you can um, start to do things like say, well, let, what if I scored 75% uh, on my second reflection paper, and then it'll tabulate your grade as if you got that. So you can kind of plan ahead and say, okay, these are the grades I want to get in these classes. What do I need to do along the way to get the grades that I want to get? Um, so the what if grades are a really useful um, feature, I think, of Canvas. Okay, I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, is there anything else that people have heard that their instructors or their, uh, as your instructors have been emailing you things that um, 
you're like, oh, how do I do that? I've never heard of this piece of technology before. <laughs> you know, um, how do I use that? Uh, I could maybe preview it for you. I, I don't know everything necessarily. You know, it's like, oh, we're going to use Wang Doodle. I don't know what that is, but <laughs> not that it's a thing. But um, or maybe you're just tired because it's 4:35 and you've been <laughs> in webinars all day. A there are a couple of questions coming in, Todd. You actually anticipated one of them uh, in asking about grades, and then there was another um, about saving the t saving a test and going back, uh, or if you have to complete a test within a single sitting. Yeah, that's a good question. So you have to, uh, generally speaking, for tests, your instructors will put a time limit on it, um, but you can go in and out of that test as often as you want. Right. So and Canvas is whenever there's a check mark, that means that Canvas has saved your answers. So if you go into a, a test and um, you know you still have time left, you can exit that test and then come back. Uh, the only caveat I'll say is that sometimes instructors, um, you know, depending on how they. Uh, 99% of the time that that that's completely fine. Sometimes instructors will uh, ask you to um, use a, uh, what's called a proctoring service, uh, in, in which case you're not able to do that. But um, generally speaking, yeah, if you go into a quiz, you can go out of the quiz as long as you finish the quiz and submit it within the time. So the clock is always ticking, even if you're not in the quiz, right? And so if you have two hours to take the quiz, you go in there for 15 minutes and then you leave, the clock is still ticking until you submit the quiz. It occurred to me, Todd, you weren't on the screen there, so you were answering. You were the the voice, the voice off screen answering that question. So. <laughs> the Wizard well, of Oz. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> we've we've come to the end of our day. I want to I want to thank uh, Todd Nicole. Um, this video will be made available, um, and there is the information um, for contacting. Um, the Canvas hotline, but uh, the advice that Nicole and Todd gave in the last uh, session, I think it applies here as well. When in doubt, ask your instructor. Um, if you have questions about what's going on, the Canvas side of a course, check in with your instructor. They're designing the class. They're going to be in the best position to provide feedback um, and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, Todd, Nicole, thank you so much for taking time today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. Welcome to UW-Green Bay, everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask.